So somebody shattered one of my RV windows. Yep, so this is my poor window. This is the window that got shattered. talk about that my last five days traveling through the state of Washington as I left Astoria and I've arrived in Seattle. So yeah, so somebody shattered one of my RV windows. Fortunately, the window didn't collapse, but let me tell you sort of everything that had that led up to that. I left Astoria and I traveled along Route 30 along the Columbia River, which is absolutely beautiful. And the Pacific Northwest is green. And the reason it's green is because they can tend to get a lot of rain up here. On the day I wanted to leave Astoria, a storm decided to pass into the Pacific Northwest. One could call it the Pacific North wet, but I decided to leave and just deal with the rain. My travel from Astoria to Longview took me on Route 30. Route 30 follows along the mighty Columbia River, but because of how dense the forest you're traveling through are, it's often just not very visible. The Pacific Northwest is frequently this intensely green and verdant place, and the price to pay for this kind of beauty is a lot of rain. But it's actually a remarkable thing to be in because the smell of fresh rain mixes with the pine trees and other types of plants to produce a sort of crisp air quality that's almost unbelievable. As you get close to Longview, the steep downgrade on Route 30 gives a wonderful view of the Columbia River, which divides Washington and Oregon. Longview is a town I used to visit often as a kid since my grandparents lived there. you cross over a huge bridge over the Columbia River called the Lewis and Clark Bridge. And that's a bridge that's been there for a great many years. And when I was a kid back in the 70s and 80s, I used to visit my grandparents who lived in Longview, Washington. So it's always fun for me to go back into that town. And I decided I did not want to stay in Longview. It's actually a very busy and dense town and it's grown substantially from what I remember it being as a kid. So my plan was to continue traveling and go to a little town called Chehalis. But I took the opportunity to take my scooter off and go and explore the neighborhood where my grandparents lived. So when I was a kid, my grandparents lived in this neighborhood that I'm in right now in Longview, Washington. And there was this awesome park that we used to go to. It had this incredible little long lake slash pond in it. And I'm here now and it's just like my kid memory remembers it. Way back in the 70s, we used to come here. And then I got back on the road and started heading up along the I-5 corridor. Drove for quite a while and it's fun because you, you, in the Pacific Northwest, they happen to have a preponderance of a type of steel graded bridge. As a kid, I loved driving through and there are a fair number of them up here. 
I eventually got into Chehalis, which is where I was going to spend the next night. And so I just pulled off and I had pre-scoped out a place on Google Maps and I stayed there for the night. And once I had gotten there, it's a small town and so I was close to the little downtown area. So I just walked into the downtown area and I did some exploring with my, with my cameras. And I really like doing that. I really like getting to a place that I haven't been to before and then going and just doing a little bit of exploration there. It's fun to me. It's fun to go into that area. And it turns out Chehalis has a history going back to the mid 1800s and their little downtown main street area was picturesque and lots of fun old buildings and, and uh, like old typical American main street. And so I just spent some time down there doing some photography and exploring. Next morning I took off headed north and I was going to go to Olympia, but I decided to take a little side detour and go to a town called Satsop. And Satsop is not in the direct route to Olympia. You have to go out of your way, but it turns out there's something really interesting there. There's a defunct nuclear power plant there. And you could, you could think that that's a little bit scary, but it turns out that it's a nuclear power plant that never actually became functional. So there's no chance of radiation or there. It got about 75% complete and then uh, back in the early 1980s, literally the plug was pulled from it and its construction and, and development was stopped. But there are two massive cooling towers there along with some of the other facilities that were going to be part of it and they're remarkable to go and see. After that I continued on into Olympia. I decided not to stay in Olympia even though I, I would love to explore downtown Olympia. It's the capital of Washington and there's a lot of old neat stuff there to explore, but I really needed to get to Seattle. So I ended up staying the night in Tacoma, which is another half an hour past Olympia because I've got family in Tacoma that I wanted to see kind of on my way. But once I got in, I decided to go explore the downtown area first. So I took my scooter off and I rode through the downtown area because my family, they're kind of a ways away and it wouldn't have made sense for me to go there and then do a bunch of backtracking. Since I was near to the downtown, I took my scooter off and I just did some quick exploration there and it's a beautiful downtown. Tacoma has some history and it has just incredibly beautiful old architecture. It's got new modern vibrant buildings down there and it's got a series of museums. There's a marina. But on my way to my family's, it turns out that there was another Planet Fitness. And so I had decided to stop and uh, go do a quick workout and take a shower before I headed off. I had gotten there and I'd parked along Side Street. That literally was right next to the Planet Fitness. It was just easier to park there than it was to park in the smaller parking lot. And got my workout done, came back to the RV and I was just in the RV doing some stuff, kind of getting prepared. And I was sitting down and I hear a car start to drive up. Now there was an apartment building there, a relatively new apartment building. It wasn't, that wasn't shady at all. But I could kind of get the sense that there was just something generally shady about this whole area of Tacoma. And so I was a little bit nervous. Car, I hear a car starting to come up. It slows down and all of a sudden I hear this crash behind my head. I didn't see it, but it seemed clear to me that what had happened was they had thrown a projectile at my window and then they suddenly tear off, right? Like it was clear that they had done this. And I hear the window behind my head shatter. And fortunately, 
it's tempered glass, so it's designed to break into a thousand pieces as opposed to big dangerous shards. The glass had a window tinting coating on both sides of it, and that window tinting coating maintained the structural integrity of the glass so it didn't just fall and leave an open gaping window there. So it was starting to get to dusk and and I had I went into emergency mode at this point and I had had half a roll of three and masking tape and I just went outside even though the window was there it was clearly in the process the internally of continuing to shatter because tempered glass will do that and it continues to break for a while. I just started applying masking tape to the outside as a way of producing extra integrity. I'm there outside putting masking tape on and all of a sudden a car drives up next to me. It, it, fa it flashes its light. Guy puts his head out the window and it's really shady and he goes, hey, hey. And I'm ignoring it. Like I'm in crisis mode putting masking tape up on my damaged window and I see some people come up and he's clearly selling drugs to them. Like, oh crap, you know, like he's selling drugs to them. So I'm literally just trying to get all the masking tape as much of it as I can to make sure that the window is as stable as possible. And then they start to drive up and they drive right up next to me and I'm trying to ignore them. And I'm clearly, again, doing this emergency repair work to the RV and woman leads out the window and she says in this super shady voice, hey, do you get high? Do you need anything? And I just looked at him and it was all I could do not to give him the finger and I ignored him and then they drove off. So instead of going to my family, I decided to make emergency plan changes and to prepare to head into Seattle, which was my ultimate destination. And I'm staying at a friend's place on his property for a couple of weeks. So I for that night I went back to my original spot as opposed to driving on to my family's place which would have taken me way far out of the way I did not want to put the extra stress on that window driving out there so I let him know what had happened and I camped the night back at the original spot in Tacoma which was right next to a Home Depot so I was able to get some more masking tape and another type of clear tape that's designed for emergency repair. I did that in the morning and then I headed on into Seattle and the window maintained its integrity. When you pull my Ikea shade down though it kind of hides it which is kind of hilarious if you think about it. <laughs> I've already called a glass repair shop who said that they could cut new tempered glass. I have to take it all the way, the RV, all the way back to Tacoma. So thanks for watching.